Carl, thanks so much. Welcome to the Halftime Report. I'm Scott Walker, front and center this hour, the state of play for stocks, the election, big tech earnings getting ever closer. Joining me for the hour, Josh Brown, Liz Young, Thomas, Jenny Harrington. We will go to the markets. Take a look. Mm. We are red uh, for the Dow. We're uh, barely positive on the S&P. NASDAQ's where the show is today. It's up about a half percent. Uh, thank you very much, Tesla, helping there. Claims were below. PMIs were better. Yields are steady. HSBC raises their target to 5,900. We're at 58. Um, so a little bit of upside left between now and the end of the year. Highest remains 6,100 from our guy, Brian Belsky. Josh Brown, your, uh, your view on, I mean, the state of stocks right now is what? Josh Brown highlights Microsoft's target cut, reflecting cautious sentiment despite Goldman's bullish stance. This tactical adjustment suggests investors are weighing potential risks, indicating a more measured approach to mega cap tech. Uh, in an upward trend, still in a bull market, perhaps consolidating, which I would argue is healthy. You want to buy the consolidation periods. You don't want to throw confetti at record highs and then press the buy button. I don't know if you know this, but that's not how investing works. So if we should get more of a pullback because people are freaked out over 10 year yields, I'm coming in and buying. And I think that what you rationally would want to do if we think we're somewhere in the in the middle of the cycle, which, I, you know, maybe, maybe not. The big swing factor for me, whether or not we actually are, is if we get a housing cycle. And one of the economic stats you didn't mention, Judge, and I will, new home sales were 738,000 in September. It's uh, almost 20,000 uh, more than expected, which is pretty good. Uh, prices were up 3.7% sequentially. The mortgage rates pulling back is very constructive for the real economy. If we get some semblance of a housing cycle after two years of a frozen market. Additionally, he mentions that the March expiration date is far off, which adds to the impression that this investor is taking a long-term view on the stock's performance. That has a very big economic multiplier effect. You don't think, you don't think what's happening in October with rates is a reversal of that? I mean, a, rates have backed up again. It's a fluid, it's a fluid situation. 7% I just saw this morning on uh, the 30-year the fixed. It's a fluid situation. I think the trend in rates is lower. I think the trend in uh, Fed funds rates uh, is definitely lower, uh, maybe at a slower pace than what we thought, but that's a good thing. The economic data continues to either be at par or surprise to the upside. Why would they be in a rush to cut rates, uh, uh, overnight rates? So I still think it's a downward trajectory for the overnight rate, and ultimately mortgage rates will follow through to the downside. We're not going to plunge. I don't know what the terminal rate will be in this cycle, but again, if you have demand for housing, the labor market holds up, the consumer continues to do what it does, and we keep hearing blowout reports from companies like Tesla and Netflix. You want to buy the pullbacks from, from highs, not cry about them. So Liz, markets have been trying to game out the election as best they can. Round contrasts this stock's trajectory with that of other major tech giants, which have been experiencing lackluster performance. This distinction serves to underscore the stock's resilience and unique potential for growth suggesting that it is thriving even when its peers are struggling. Ten, uh, they've been betting on a reflation trade. You've seen it in yields, you've seen it in cyclicals, metals, the dollar, etc. Yep. Whether or not that turns out to be right, we'll see. Um, if nothing else, though, most are expecting a pickup in volatility sure. between now and Election Day. Sentiments likely to stay vulnerable near term, according to UBS. They're still positive like Josh, but as November 5th inches closer, the market sentiment is likely to stay vulnerable. What do you think? Well, we're getting pretty close now, and I think we've been waiting for this volatility, the normal seasonal volatility that you get in an election cycle. Typically, September is volatile any year in an election year, even more so, and then it usually extends into mid-October. We haven't really seen that this year. So now we're in this period of, oh, wait, let's catch up and be volatile for the last couple of weeks before the election. He notes that these trades are substantial and suggest a strong belief in the stock's potential to continue reaching new highs as earnings season approaches. The fact that the options are far out of the money meaning the strike price is well above the current stock price indicates a high level of confidence that the stock will rally significantly in the future. To Josh's point, I don't mean to throw cold water on your point, but yes, new home sales were healthy. However, existing home sales earlier this week were not. We hit a 14-year low. So there's actually still a pause in, and a freeze in the mortgage market because rates have gone back up. 
I agree. I don't think we're going to plummet from here. And the only way that we're going to see a really big drop in the Fed funds rate is if something terrible happened and they had to try to save it and catch up on the other side. In essence, he is emphasizing how this trading activity reflects broader market sentiments and showcases the stock's strong positioning amidst challenges facing the technology sector as a whole. But things are healthy, the economy seems stable, everything, and I've said this before, if we could freeze everything in time right now, that would be great and keep it here. So far, that seems to sort of be the case. The relationship that needs to work the way that it should is different from what we've seen. We can't have yields up, stocks up in perpetuity. So at well, some point, stocks do have to take a pause. And I think we're seeing a bit of a pause now, which is normal after this rise in yields. You could have... This alludes to the idea that the stock may be seen as a standout investment opportunity in a challenging market environment. Josh Brown seems to be expressing a sense of optimism and resilience in the current market situation. He suggests that just when it seems like the market might be slowing down or facing challenges, it tends to bounce back and show strength. He specifically references March 2025, indicating that there's something noteworthy about that time frame in terms of market expectations or developments. The mention of NVIDIA as a major player in the tech sector highlights its importance in the overall market narrative, especially as it's one of the last major companies to report earnings among the large tech stocks. This suggests that investors are closely watching these reports to gauge the health of the market and the economy. Overall, Brown seems to convey a mix of caution and bullishness, emphasizing the cyclical nature of markets and the ongoing importance of key players in driving trends. Josh Brown is discussing options trading, specifically focusing on an NVIDIA options trade. He emphasizes that instead of viewing the trade from a large institutional perspective, it's helpful to analyze it at the individual share level. He explains that if NVIDIA stock is around $130, an option with a strike price of $150 needs to increase by $20 for the option to break even. This means NVIDIA stock would need to reach approximately $163 to $164 for the trade to be profitable. He also points out that while this is the break-even point, it doesn't preclude the stock from moving significantly in other directions. In this excerpt, Josh Brown is discussing a bullish investment strategy related to NVIDIA. He mentions the Greeks which are metrics used to assess risk in options trading, but emphasizes that the focus here is on a specific bullish bet rather than hedging an existing position. He notes that someone, presumably Kevin, wouldn't typically place this kind of trade for hedging. Instead, buying a significant number of options like 5,000 contracts for the $150 strike price suggests that the trader believes NVIDIA's stock price will rise significantly. Brown also mentions the upcoming earnings date February 26th, implying that the timing of this trade could be tied to expectations around the earnings report, which could influence the stock's movement. In this segment, Josh Brown is highlighting a significant trend in trading activity related to NVIDIA. He notes that the volume of call options which investors buy when they expect the stock price to rise is currently double that of put options which investors buy when they expect the stock price to fall. This indicates strong bullish sentiment among traders. He then transitions to discuss the broader context of the tech market, mentioning that after a period of lackluster performance, major technology stocks have seen a resurgence, with communication services and tech sectors leading gains of nearly 10%. He specifically points out NVIDIA's impressive 25% increase, suggesting that investor confidence in the company and the tech sector is returning. Overall, he's emphasizing a positive shift in market sentiment and performance in the tech space. In this segment, Josh Brown is discussing the performance of major tech stocks over the past month. He highlights that Meta Facebook is up 17.5% and Alphabet Google is up 10%, indicating strong performance from these companies. He then mentions NVIDIA, noting that its stock is approaching its all-time high of $58 as the SP500 also nears 5,800 points suggesting a bullish trend in the market. Brown also points out that there have been recent downgrades and target cuts for certain stocks, specifically mentioning Microsoft, which had its target price reduced from $515 to $506. This suggests a cautious outlook on some stocks, despite the overall positive trends in the tech sector. Essentially, he's reflecting on the mixed signals in the market, with some companies thriving while others face revised expectations. Josh Brown is likely discussing an investment or stock that Goldman Sachs has rated as overweight meaning they believe it will perform better than the market average.
when he mentions that people are at least on a tactical basis. He might be suggesting that investors are considering short-term strategies or specific conditions for trading this stock, rather than just a long-term buy and hold approach. Essentially, he's highlighting a focus on immediate market movements or opportunities, despite the overall positive rating from Goldman. In the segment, Josh Brown is pointing out an intriguing phenomenon in the options market related to NVIDIA, a company that has garnered significant attention due to its market performance. He notes that there's an exceptional amount of bullish options activity, particularly surrounding call options set to expire in the spring of 2025. What makes this noteworthy is the context NVIDIA is currently one of the largest companies by market capitalization and is trading at an all-time high. Typically, you might expect that a stock already at such heights would see some caution among investors, but the opposite is happening here. The aggressive buying of call options across a wide range of strike prices from $150 all the way up to $189 indicates a strong belief among traders that the stock will continue to rise. Brown, who identifies himself as a cash equities trader, emphasizes that while he's not directly involved in the options market, he engages with many people who are. One of these individuals is Joe Famey, a well-known figure in financial analysis. Their conversations reveal a sentiment that is not commonly seen. It reflects a robust confidence in NVIDIA's future performance, especially as it relates to its potential for growth and innovation in sectors like artificial intelligence and gaming. This surge in bullish options activity raises several questions. For instance, what are the catalysts that traders believe will drive NVIDIA's stock higher in the coming months? Are there specific products, technological advancements, or market conditions that could influence this trajectory? Additionally, Brown's observations invite discussion around broader market trends and investor sentiment, particularly in high growth sectors. He seems to encourage his audience to explore these dynamics further, implying that understanding this level of bullishness could provide valuable insights into the overall market environment and the confidence investors have in NVIDIA's strategic direction. The implications of such activity can have ripple effects, influencing both market sentiment and investment strategies across various sectors. Josh Brown is highlighting a significant trading phenomenon involving thousands of options contracts for a particular stock, which he emphasizes is not driven by retail investors. This points to a more sophisticated player in the market, possibly an institutional investor or hedge fund, making a strategic bet. He notes that these trades are substantial and suggest a strong belief in the stock's potential to continue reaching new highs as earnings season approaches. The fact that the options are far out of the money meaning the strike price is well above the current stock price indicates a high level of confidence that the stock will rally significantly in the future. Additionally, he mentions that the March expiration date is far off, which adds to the impression that this investor is taking a long-term view on the stock's performance. Brown contrasts this stock's trajectory with that of other major tech giants, which have been experiencing lackluster performance. This distinction serves to underscore the stock's resilience and unique potential for growth, suggesting that it is thriving even when its peers are struggling. In essence, he is emphasizing how this trading activity reflects broader market sentiments and showcases the stock's strong positioning amidst challenges facing the technology sector as a whole. This alludes to the idea that the stock may be seen as a standout investment opportunity in a challenging market environment. Josh Brown's commentary reflects a nuanced understanding of the current market dynamics and the broader economic landscape. He emphasizes the resilience of the market, suggesting that despite periods of uncertainty or negative sentiment, the market often surprises observers by rebounding and demonstrating strength. His phrase is just getting warmed up. Indicates that he believes there's potential for continued growth or upward movement, even when it seems like the momentum has shifted or stalled. When he mentions March 2025, it signals a specific time frame that he and his audience should keep an eye on. This date could represent a critical period for various economic indicators, corporate earnings, or perhaps even broader geopolitical events that could impact the market. By highlighting this point, Brown is inviting listeners to consider the long-term perspective, and not just the immediate fluctuations or challenges that the market faces.